Welcome in my crafting creatures and here's another round of card making 101 well basic card making so water card watercolor card nice and thick can take some water as well as some ink um, a card base that I have made from an ombre green card and an envelope to go with it but we don't need that for now so first stamp set I'm going to use is this one um, basically I only need the one which is just here I just want the little first aid kit and with this one I'll be using three different ones I will be using the bug just here the little fly the jar hopefully and the herd you caught a bug sentiment scrap piece of paper for embossing a scrap piece of card that I'm going to turn into a banner my stamping tool sorry about the reflections an acrylic block a whatever you call it sheet that I've forgotten waterproof sheet I'm going to be using these water brushes water tank at the bottom brush at the top very handy this will be the second time that I've used them so still getting used to it glossy accents some nouveau drops now these ones are blueberry I think yep they're just not working for the camera why does this camera not want to focus ever <laughs> Oh well, trust me, it's a uh, blueberry. Oh well, okay, and a few inks. So we have Oxide Candid Apple, Salty Ocean, Broken China, Hickory Smoke and Twisted Citron. So I'll use them a bit later. Stay. Okay. Um, some black ink and clear embossing ink of course embossing we're going to need some embossing powder so I've got some clear gloss embossing powder here personal impressions and some black metal metallic dust but it's black it's black it's black like salt it's black and a little bit of greeny gold glitter just a little bit of course it's going to need a heating tool because we are embossing so that's about it there we go so first off onto the non-stick mat I am going to take out the twisted citron the broken china and the salty ocean but we're just going to concentrate on the blues for the moment so in we go and just dab it on here and there and then the salty ocean dab, 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 dab. that'll do it might be blue I might love it but that will do for the moment so I didn't do that in the intro need a bit of water just a little bit a little spritz no you're not deodorizing it just giving it a little spritz of water and then we take our watercolored card and we're going to smush it just like that smush I know there's a name for this technique and I really can't recall what it is so I apologize but smush smush ta-da we have a background funky background ah don't run away stay Mm hmm okay a tiny little bit of the twisted citron don't need too much oh get up okay so let's move that to where it's not going to fall over all over the place but it can dry because you need it to dry a little smush on the green with the water and I'm going to take my scrap piece of card which I'm going to turn into a banner don't worry about that ink because that's going to be on the back 
What I'm interested in is what I'm smushing all over the front. So I've got some green and some blue on there. Just need a little bit of blue maybe, because maybe it's a little bit too green. Just want it higgledy piggledy. I need it more green than blue, but I do want both colours on there. Yeah, no, that's just too... No science with this particular technique. It's just aim and try, aim and try. So I'm going to dry this a little bit because I'm not going to wait around for it. I'm too lazy. I want it done now. So getting the heating tool just speeds it up. Give it a proper dry. And I never claim to be a professional at these. This is just give it a go and see what happens. And a lot of the time when I'm making a card on here on video, it's trial and error. And I will keep the errors in just so there's proof that I am human and mistakes can be made. Um, but you see the card at the end and it is what it is. Um, so please no telling me off uh, what a rubbish card because I know <laughs> but the thing is as long as it gives you an idea of something that you can make or um, gives you an idea or spurs you on to actually do one yourself then well there we go the aim is good That's a little bit too much blue on the top here hence why I just flicked a little bit off dry 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 if you haven't subscribed or given a thumbs up I would appreciate it if you did please every little helps even if it's one one the fun is all good please please so let's get rid of the waterproof mat. And now you may or may not be able to tell. I actually redid the background because I messed up big time. So uh, this one is a little bit more blue. Uh, but the banner is already done. So apologies, I've changed it. But I did mess up a little bit too much to keep it all in. But anyway, on with the stamping. So background goes onto the stamping tool. Of course, you don't have to use a stamping tool. You can use um, an acrylic block or if you have wooden stamps, no need for any blocks or stamping tools at all. At all, at all. Mm, a little bit wet still. Dry it off, dry it off kind of like this background a little bit more because it's a little bit more bobbly okay so get out the jar first and find a good place for it like yep 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 that works okay good um a little bug can go up there for the moment. We don't need him yet. We don't need the sentiment, of course, but it's heard you caught a bug. I've already done that, though, so thankfully I don't need to do it again because it's up here, you see? See? All done. Mm -hmm. That can go over there for the minute. Okay, so back to this. So I've got the jar. I need the first aid kit. Um, first aid kit. Oh, there it is. Okay, so let's grab that. Um, uh, that's everything from there. Yep. Okay, let's get rid of them. So the jar is on. Okay, that's good. So let's do the jar first. Now I want to keep this clear because I want to make it glass-like. Um, so try and keep it as clear as I can. Anti-static powder tool. 
give it a good wipe over so there's no greasy spots, no wetness, no oil. Give it a good douse. And then my clear embossing ink. And give it a good press. And then we go in again. Now, I do it twice just because I like to do it twice. Doesn't mean you have to. You can do it six times. You can do it 20 times. You can do it one time. You know how you do it and you like to do it. So you do you. OK, so let's get this. Powdered. Okay, on with the clear gloss powder, give it a good dousing, tap off, and can you see it? There you go, just about to see that there. Um, get this powder into the pot before I knock it all over the floor. Okay, paper away for the moment. Don't need the jar anymore. Let's close that back up. Sorry for the reflection. Sorry, 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 sorry. Heating tool out. Now, you might be able to see the jar at the moment. As the embossing powder melts, the jar will melt away from your eyes. Thankfully, it doesn't melt away from my eyes. I can still see it, <laughs> but it's gone for you for the moment. OK, so now that's done. Now we need to do the next part. So back into the stamping tool it goes. For anybody that doesn't have one of these, those little dots are actually magnets to actually hold down the card or paper so the stamp doesn't cling. So here's a little bug, little bug, little bug. I did contemplate over putting a little ladybird in there, but I thought, no, I don't bug people that much. Ha, 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 ha. Anyway, that is right inside the jar. I promise you it is. So give it a press. All right, that's enough, Lisa. There's no ink on it yet. And get my black ready because I want the black on the medi kit, I think. Get the glitter ready and the black ink. So let's ink it up. Don't you know, ink it up? You got to ink it up, don't you know, ink it up. No? Okay. Give that a good press. Now the bad thing with this little bug, bless it, it only has one eye, which is the stamp's fault, not mine, I promise. But I will rectify that in a little while. So for the second stamping, down we go. Lovely, that's better. Okay, and you see, it's only got one eye. Aye, aye, Captain. Poor little thing. We'll sort it out with a pen. Thankfully, it's only a dot. Ta da! Now it has two eyes. You see? You see? <laughs> well, the bug does now. Okay, so. Uh, next, okay, we need to go in one more time, just because it's not quite as crisp, not crisp, it's not quite as dark as I want it to be, thankfully it is nice and crisp, but anyway, glitter, I just want it on the wings only. 
and I will only be having a little bit on there. There'll only be a tiny little sparkle, nothing huge. Just to give it a little bit of something different. Camera laser. So it's just a little bit on there, but it does lessen when it's heated. Let's get this back in the pot first. Okay, that's the lid back on. Let's get this heated. Thankfully, the glitter's really quick. I'll probably see it glittering around while I'm moving the hot air around it. And that is that done just about. Okay, yep, done. Lovely. So it's only a tiny little sparkle on it now. Okay, bug be gone. Now, next part. Um, I could have done this at the same time as the bug, but because it's going to be a different embossing powder, I didn't want to mix the two together. So now we are going in with the Medi kit, first aid kit. I'm going through opposite side on the slant again. This is a nice flat card. There's nothing overly sticky outy yet. And of course, if you were doing something similar, you could just keep it all as one. I will be adding dimension in a little while, but for now it's fairly flat and it could easily stay that way. Because of course, when you post in, it's better to be flatter than fatter. Better to be flatter than fatter. Black embossing powder is on, just on the Medikit. Now the good thing with having embossing powder when you're going to be using inks and colouring in and things, unless you deliberately do it, inks kind of stay in the lines of the embossing powder, which is very, very handy. And that's why I've done it this way. So that's the black and back in you go to the pot. Thank you very much. And let's get the lid on. Don't want to spill it. I'm not someone done anyway, so let's get rid of that. Okay, let's get this heated. Now, don't forget to clean any stamping tools, acrylic block, your stamps, of course, as soon as you can. Okay, so whether you're going to be able to see this or not, I don't know, but it should go nice and shiny. Well, it's shiny for me. It's a really quick one for me. Is it sh there you go. You can see a little bit of shine on there. Whereas the bug? Nope. Just a little bit on the wing and nothing else. We don't want shiny bugs, do we? No, 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 no. Now, let's get rid of the stamping tool because we don't need that anymore. So, next, get my candied apple. Oh, oops. Don't throw it all over the place, Lisa. It's not a good sight. Acrylic block, just a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit more. Just a little bit. A little bit more. Ooh, ah. Uh, just a little bit. Ooh, ah. Uh. No, okay. Shut up, Lisa. Okay. Watercolour paintbrush. First tip, when I can get it off. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to squeeze just a drop onto the um, acrylic block uh, just to give a little bit more water to the ink but only one drop just so I have my watercolour and I need a tiny little bit just in that cross so not exactly a lot 
of ink needed and of course you don't have to use an ink pad you can use coloring pencils you can use wax you can use reinkers there's so many different forms of things that you could use the only thing holding you back is your imagination so that's dry so i'm going to go in again one more time just to give it a little bit more redness because it's a little bit faint because as soon as all the inks dry they go that little bit fainter so just give it a little bit more color there you go nice and red lovely jubbly I don't know why I've gone so high. Now, next. Hickory smoke, which is a nice grey colour. And a new uh, water brush tip, because you don't want to put red where you've actually currently got grey so hickory smoke onto the acrylic block now you can't see that there but now you can it's like the disappearing jar trick isn't it so new tip on the water brush one drop of water mix it a little bit so we've got some color to use and i'm just going to do the top of the jar like the screw top lid as it were and then you'll be able to see the top of the jar even if you can't see anything else yet so just the top of the jar there and give that a quick dry As you can see, it does go fainter. So let's get some more. Go over it one more time. Good thing with oxides is they do layer up, which is nice. Great for blending. Very good for blending. I have more oxides than I have anything else, so you'll end up seeing a lot of Distress Oxides inks. Really ought to invest in some more pigment inks, really. But for now, these work for me. You can use whatever you use. Now, the bug. What are we going to do with the bug? Twisted Citron is what we're going to do with the bug so clean part of the acrylic block and just a little bit and then we need a new brush tip so new brush tip on now let's do a drop and give it a smush around and let's go in and do the body and a little bit over the wing not too much over the wing I just want to give a hint of green not too much I will do the body itself green green but the wings, I know that you can't really see it on here. But the wings are only going to be hinted. The body's going to be green. Because when you're ill, you look green. So it's a green bug. That was my thought process anyway. Okay, so let's get that dried.
and I'll change the brush tip again and we're going back to the grey the hickory smoke and I just want to do its wings and then it's grey with a hint of green give that a dry don't need that anymore so there we go there's the bug in the jar even though you still can't see the jar properly but we're about to address that and the medical bag but there you go you can see just a little bit now in with the glossy accents now that everything is dry and i'm going to cover the entirety of that jar so i'm going to go all over it Well, with glossy accents it does actually go on and it looks a little bit cloudy but it does dry clear to give a glassy effect which you can kind of see just here the bug is now in a jar okay now the sentiment up here I'm going to give it a bit of a trim. I think I'll make it a kind of an arrow. As with most things that I do, I'm just eyeballing it. There's no accuracy. I think if I started being really accurate with things, people would think there was something wrong. You're doing something accurate, Lisa. Is it somebody else that did it? Oh, you got me. So. Now, where to position it? Hmm. Apologies for the jump cut. I went and grabbed some foam tape and my scissors and some foam pads <laughs> which I forgot right at the beginning but I'm going to make this banner stand up so the foam pads are a little bit wider than the banner so I'm gonna have to trim them a little bit so I've got my really old scissors they get glued up so often and they're so blunt and it doesn't matter how much I clean or even try to sharpen them, they never get sharp. So I use them for stupid things like this. So I'm going to need one more, which means I've got to cut it again. Now that glossy accent actually takes about 24 hours to dry. Or less of course that depends on your atmosphere um, so I will be leaving it overnight let's get a little bit more on the tip of that banner um, we'll be leaving it overnight but I want to get this banner on first before I leave it all right we've got sticky outy bits so I'm going to trim that off because you don't want sticky outy bits like that so in we go snip it off and snip it off 
so now nothing is showing let's take the backing off of the foam pads Twenty four hours later, ta da! And we've got a couple of other items. So we need a pen. I want to do the screw top lid. I just want to highlight that a little bit. Um the glass jar is all glassy. I have a silicon thingy here to do stamp reversal, which I'll show you in a minute because I feel like I want to do some more bugs here there. Just fill in some spaces, but I'll show you that in a moment i'm going to reuse the twisted citron because more bugs means more green ink so um a little technique if you ever have a stamp that you want to reverse the direction of it this is not a bad technique so you ink up your stamp without throwing it everywhere oh no oh well let's um put you down there you can be an upside down bug because why not oh dear me okay let me just ink him up there you go now you have two eyes lucky you so let's try that again without throwing it all over the place so you stamp your stamp in whatever ink you're using onto a silicon mat and then you place whatever you want to actually stamp over the top and press down I wouldn't do it overly hard but you've got to give some pressure because otherwise it's going to be really faint like that so that was only an example the rest of them I will do with better pressure I just wanted to show you what happens if you don't put the pressure on but it's an opposite stamp so let's go in and do a proper one up in the corner And there we go. So maybe one more. Bottom corner. Sorry, that bit's off screen. Up there as well. That will do. Don't want to overrun it with the bugs. Now let's just give them their eyes and this just go around the outline a little bit because there's a lot of blue build up ink up here so it's not quite as crisp so let's speed this bit up while I go give them their eyes and just re-ink them And that's done. So I've gone round and given them all their eyes and just touched up. So now it's time to give them a little bit of colour. So back out with the twisted citron on the acrylic block. Okay. Go away. My water brush is back out. So let's put a little bit of water in the ink and give it a little wipe around and then we've got a watercolour and this is why you use watercolour card because if you didn't uh, the card actually wouldn't be able to take the amount of water from the smushing and this um, when you're doing watercolor like this you end up with like piling on the card so the bugs I'm going to do them all with a blue body a green body sorry and some of them I'm going to do with the hint of green inside their wings not all of them just a couple of them so again I will fast forward this bit So I'm saying that is now enough green. So now I need to get my 
hickory smoke, which is my grey, because I want to do their little wings. So a little bit more on the acrylic block and I'm going to blend it a little bit with the black ink that's on there to make some a little bit darker, some a little bit lighter. So new brush so I don't mix the green. I'm also going to do the uh, medical kit as well because why not? So on with the new tip. Just like a that. And again we need to put a little bit from the water reservoir into the ink mix it a little bit okay so I've mixed the black with the hickory smoke you see so that's actually pigment ink and oxide mixed together so let's just color in the little wingies Just like that. And remember, they do dry a little bit fainter. So just because they're quite dark at the moment, they won't be when they're dry, but you'll see that. So this one's got a little bit of green hint on the wing. So this one down in the corner is off screen. There we go. And now I'm not any good at colouring in. Just like everything else, I'm no master at anything. I'm just doing whatever's needed. One last fly to do. Bug fly thing. And that's the wings. Done. So now I need to think about the medical bag. Hmm. So that's the flies, the bugs so far. Now let's finish off, make the top a little bit darker. And I've squeezed a little bit of water down to dilute the black ever so slightly to make the bottom part slightly lighter. Let's get rid of that. Get my pen back out because going over the bugs, I got rid of their mouths and like I said earlier, I wanted to go around the screw top of the jar just to show it a little bit better, I guess. So back out with my Sharpie fine line. It's a bit better. Hmm. Okay, let's get these bug mouths done. Okay, and I'll say that the background is done. So a jump cut, I have just trimmed down three sides. This one, the bottom and this one. Um, didn't bother with the top. Just did the three sides just so that I could have a little border of the base card showing up. Um, now, 
I'm going to lift this up with some more foam tape. So this is about four mil thick. This is quite a thick one. But I am going to put this all the way around on the back. cut that little bit off because it's a little bit excess but I will be using it in another part there we go now one more tiny little bit for the bottom corner which unfortunately isn't on camera but trust me it needs it <laughs> so I'm just going to put that little bit down now done with the foam tape make sure the base card opens the correct way okay and then I'm going to partly peel some of these so that I'm able to actually position before I put down bad thing with foam tape when it's down it is down I could put liquid glue on the foam tape which is a nice idea because you can squizzle it around. But honestly, my glue was away and I was too lazy to get up and go and get it. So I just did this way instead. And just a little bit in that middle, which I'd forgotten about. that completely off and now let's get this eyeballed and see roughly where it's going to go because I don't want to commit to putting it down until it is ready hmm. oh that's pretty good let's go there yep and down careful careful don't remove it and we will remove one piece of tape first and the next and press it down and the next and the last one at the bottom and then we push it all down and that is card complete apart from my little ladybird on the back so this is what I do on every card but I'm not going to show you on every card just trust me this is what I do so I get my little ladybird stamp usually I do it in black it depends on the theme of the card sometimes I do it in the main theme of the card there's my little ladybird on the back of the card and then I take my fine liner pen. Sometimes I do it in the colour of the card as well. All depends. And I just write on there, Ladybird Designs. And I use the capital D from the end of Ladybird to create the capital for the word designs. Okay, so one last little bit that I fancied adding just one Nuvo drops woo so I just want a couple of speckles really because the card is quite speckly and blotchy I wanted some 3d blotches that go with the background 
just to give a little bit more dimension, a little bit more texture. So just doing the odd, very, very small drop here and there. Nothing that's going to stand out too much unless you look and then you'll see ooh, texture, as it were. So just a couple here and there. No pattern, no rhythm to it, just hickledy mickledy. And that will do, I think. Lovely. So that for me is the card complete. Bit of dimension, bit of texture, a little bit of randomness. And of course, the glass jar. Finito. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope I've inspired you to do something. Thank you. Take care.